With NFTs or non-fungible tokens exploding in popularity recently, everyone wants to know everything about them. Well, don't you worry, cause I've got all the answers. I received a bunch of comments on my how to make an NFT video, so I'm going to answer all of the most important NFT art and NFT crypto questions right now. Before we start, if you are new here, welcome. I'm Nick and I post videos every single Thursday helping you learn more about money. Let's start with question number one. In simple terms, what is an NFT? An NFT is a unique token that lives on the blockchain. It really is no different than any physical piece of art or another physical collectible. Let's say you own a CryptoPunk NFT. That NFT is in your possession and you really can't do anything with it besides hold on to it or sell it. It's honestly just like a regular piece of artwork. You can put it on display if you want. You can do whatever you want with it. As I said, NFT art tokens are on the blockchain, so they're publicly available to anyone, meaning they can be tracked by anyone for their authenticity. The blockchain holds all records of that NFT, who created it, when it was created, when it was sold or transferred. If you want a more in-depth explanation at what an NFT actually is, go watch this video linked above. Now let's get to question number two. What are gas fees when we're talking about NFTs and what is gasless transactions when we're selling an NFT? Every transaction or smart contract done on the blockchain requires gas. Think of it like this. Let's say you have a car. When you have a car, you obviously need gasoline for it to actually work. Now, as you all know, gasoline prices fluctuate based off of supply and demand. This is exactly the same for the blockchain. We can think of transactions on the blockchain like a trip in a car. Each trip or each transaction takes a certain amount of gas to get it done. As the transactions get larger, the amount of gas needed to complete that transaction goes up as well. So in this case, regular transactions on the Ethereum blockchain take less gas than larger transactions such as smart contracts. And don't worry, later in this video, we will go over what transactions are versus smart contracts. So how much are these Ethereum gas fees typically? So I'm going to go to this website, etherscan.io, and they actually have daily gas prices for Ethereum transactions. So you guys can see up on the screen right now that it could vary anywhere from around $10 to $40 per transaction. Now these gas prices do fluctuate based off of supply and demand within the Ethereum network. The more people trying to actually make transactions, the higher these gas prices will go. If you guys have more questions about these gas fees, how they work and why they change, put them down below in the comments and I'll answer them in a future video. Now that we know the basics on gas fees regarding NFTs and NFT artwork, do you actually need to pay these fees? Some NFT marketplaces like Mintable and OpenSea actually have a gasless option, meaning that you can mint NFTs without having to pay the gas fee. In short, gasless minting means that you can take your item, create an NFT without an actual transaction being done on the blockchain. This eliminates the need for gas because there's no actual transaction. Now you may be wondering, how is that possible? Is it actually minted as an NFT if there is no transaction on the blockchain? So here's how it works. Let's say I mint an NFT with Mintable's gasless service. That now is a valid NFT, but you won't actually see a transaction on the blockchain until that NFT is transferred to someone else's wallet or it's bought by someone else. Basically until that NFT has a valid transaction on the Ethereum blockchain, you won't have to pay any gas fees. And specifically for Mintable, when you sell an item gasless on their marketplace, the buyer has to pay the gas fees once that transaction happens. So as a seller on Mintable, you will not be responsible for any gas fees if you choose to go the gasless route. This will allow a ton of new users into the NFT space that weren't really about it because of the high gas fees. 
Now I showed this in my last NFT video, but once you create a gasless NFT, you'll actually get a message sent to your crypto wallet and you just have to sign saying that yes, that NFT is yours and that it's valid. I think we'll see many other players in the Ethereum NFT space do gasless minting. Okay, so we now know that we don't have to pay gas fees if we don't want to. But what are the other fees associated with selling an NFT? Currently, as it stands, if you want to sell an NFT, you have to use an NFT marketplace. There are various sites, but the most popular ones are Rarible, OpenSea, and Mintable. Aside from the gas fee, all of these sites charge you a percentage when you sell an NFT using their marketplace. Let's go take a quick look at these sites and what their fees are. So we can see for Mintable, Mintable takes a transaction fee when an item is sold. And here are the breakdown of fees. 2.5% on normal items, that means non-gasless items, you're gonna have to pay some gas to get that NFT minted. If you choose to go gasless, your percentage you're gonna have to pay mintable is 5%. Then they also say there's 10% taken on printable series. A printable series is basically a huge collection of NFTs. So if you wanna sell millions of NFTs at once, you can use a printable series, but as you can see, the percentage that you're gonna have to pay is pretty high. Now, as I said before, with mintable, the buyer actually pays the gas fees when you're selling gasless. For OpenSea and Rarible, these percentages look basically the same as Mintable, 2.5% for regular transactions. So just know if you're making NFT art or NFT crypto art, you're going to have to need to pay at least a 2.5% fee. On to the next NFT art question, and that is, what can you actually make into an NFT? This answer is actually pretty simple. You can make anything that you can digitally upload into an NFT. Whether that be a JPEG image of a cat, a written out poem, or a digital piece of real estate, the possibilities are endless. I was even thinking about some of the weird things that we could see being made into NFTs in the future. Just imagine someone uploading their social security card as an NFT, or even the deed to their house as an NFT. I hear a lot of NFT enthusiasts actually think that NFTs will be used in the future as kind of a verification process for physical items. One example is an NFT when you buy a house. That token or NFT shows that you bought a certain house at a specific date and that you actually own it. When you sell that house, that NFT is transferred along. This would be public record and it would show when the transaction happened, for what price, and all of the details. This brings us to the very last NFT crypto art question. What's the difference between a transaction on the blockchain and a smart contract on the blockchain? A blockchain transaction can be defined as a small task that is being done on the blockchain. Each of these records that comes with a transaction is known as a block, hence blockchain. These blocks are executed and validated by everyone else on the Ethereum blockchain. Now a smart contract is a little different. It adds layers of detail to various transactions that are happening on the blockchain. As I was saying earlier in the video, these smart contracts take more gas to perform. These are more complex transactions and they're usually contracts between a buyer and seller or whenever you're transferring a specific thing on the blockchain from your Yourself to someone else. In simple terms, a smart contract is just that. It's an agreement between two parties. And with that, give this video a like if you learned more about NFTs. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next Thursday.